side of the door. My, some, I have about three cats that are gonna go crazy and lead the way. Here they come. success with the new recipe and they're going to keep eating until these bowls are clear and then they're good for the day except for a few snacks so hang in there let's start making some turkey cat food today we're going to make homemade cat food with turkey welcome to my kitchen this is tiny this is Callie I'm allowing them to roam a bit while we cook today seeing as we're making cat food they love this project i don't make it terribly frequently at least as frequently as i make human food but they get excited for cat food day so again these are the ingredients that we're going to be uh, using the tools that we're going to need um, i'm going to go through each one of them individually in just a moment but now i'm going to do probably the most boring part of the entire thing and get the turkey cooking now um if we, this is your first video with me, my name is Joanna Troutman. This is from my How to Really Cook series. This is the second cat food video. The first one featured chicken. Uh, and we, if you haven't cooked with me yet, this is gonna be a little bit different than a lot of other cooking videos because I put each ingredient in with a very specific purpose. And I do go deep in explaining why I'm using particular things, why I'm not using particular things. And in this video specifically, we're gonna really dig into several questions that I had uh, from the chicken cat food video to kind of make things a little bit more clear, uh, a lot more doable. So let's get started. I'm going to grab my gloves. I'm going to move the turkey out of your reach. Sorry, Sally. Off we go. Okay. Over here, I have my gigantic stock pot. There's a really good chance you do not have a pot this big, but I have one and I use it specifically for projects like this because this one I happen to have a strainer piece that fits in. It's got a, one of my, uh, this is for one of my canners. I'll move that out of the way. Uh, all right, so the strainer. I'm going to put it in the pot. At the moment, my pot is completely empty. I'm going to add the water after I put the turkey in. And if you did not catch my roasting a turkey video, uh, this turkey will be handled in a similar way in that we are not going to wash it prior to cooking it. Uh, basically, we're going to kill the pathogens with heat where they are on the bird and do our best to not splash them around the kitchen. Now, there are a lot of people out there who feel very strongly that they should be giving their cat raw meat and nothing but raw meat. I simply have not found uh, good peer-reviewed scientific research that shows that they cannot be perfectly healthy on a cooked food diet. The, all of the research shows that you, in fact, though some nutrients disappear during cooking, uh, the vast majority of them do not. And you can make up for that in quantity and what you the, the expense of a few lost nutrients for me is far less than the expense of a pathogen a foodborne pathogen that is the biggest thing in food safety when it comes to um, basically cooking your meat for humans it makes it more digestible for us it gets rid of the pathogens now these guys are licking up the turkey juice which is not not super excited about it guys i'm going to go ahead and start pulling out the neck because i'm going to be using that wait wait hi guys you guys get the cooked version in a few minutes well a few minutes more like several hours uh don't worry yes i did say several hours but that is not the actual cook time i'm pulling out the liver we're going to use that the heart, there we go. That looks like some of the other organs. We are going to use the organ meat in this. That is good for the cats. Now, 
Nothing but organ meat for most cats is going to make them sick. I'm gonna remove the plastic little thermometers because we don't need them. We're going to be boiling this rather than roasting it to get it to achieve uh, a safe temperature. And boiling water is right around 212 degrees Celsius. That is hot enough to kill pathogens. So in the turkey goes, there we go. I am going to dispose of this nonsense as quickly as possible. Into the garbage it goes. And I'm going to wash my hands super quick. Even though I was wearing gloves, better safe than sorry. And after I do this, after this video is done, I will be disinfecting my counters. It is serious. They, that can spread all over the house and people can get very sick from E. coli, salmonella, and several other microorganisms that are very commonly found on the outside of meats during the processing point, during the processing uh, in meat packing facilities and that sort of thing. Uh, animal products just attract bacteria. They're like the yummy supply of food to get those bacteria going. So off we go. Turkey is in the pot. I have my disinfectant. Let's go ahead. This is a disinfectant spray. And another clean washcloth. Mostly because I don't want their little paws going all over my kitchen, walking in this turkey juice, and then going all over the house, spreading whatever may have been on, on the turkey. All right. My turkey is in the pot. I'm going to actually grab the lid to help control any overspray. I'm gonna use the spray gun. You do it however you see fit. I don't actually wanna put it in the sink because it uh, it's heavy once you, you know, add the water to it. All right. And we are going to add water until the bird is covered. So I'm adding it from the side, trying to minimize the splashing. I'm actually running it on the side of the pot rather than on the side of the turkey. So, we are cooking our meat. And yes, we are going to boil it because this is, um, for me, it's the most efficient way to cook it when I want the bones and everything else basically cooked down till it's super tender. Now, there have been studies and I, I had some comments about you cooked all the nutrients out of the meat by boiling it. You should have roasted it, roasted it. Okay, here's the deal with that. Yes, if I boiled this turkey and then pulled the turkey out and just used the meat from it and just discarded the water that it was cooking in, you do lose quite a bit of the minerals as well as several amino acids and your water-soluble vitamins, which like are the B family. Um, however, however, one of the key ingredients for this cat food is the turkey stock, which is the water after you've cooked down the bones, the meat, everything in it. We're actually gonna, in this particular recipe, grind the bones as well. If you have a strong enough food processor or a blender, once you have cooked it down to the point where you could, this is essentially a turkey stock, you can actually snap the bones with your fingers. They're very brittle because again, a bunch of the minerals are in the, uh, the stock part, the liquid part. Um, but we're going to grind those, up, grind those up as well and add them in as bone meal. You'll see we left the organ meat, which is super high in taurine, as well as some of the other uh, fat-soluble vitamins that your cats need. Now again, those organ meats, if they just ate organ meat, they have a history of making a lot of cats very sick because they are too rich, because not only are you getting your fat-soluble vitamins from organs like the liver, but you're getting anything toxic that that animal, that bird, the turkey, in this case, ever ate, because that stuff gets run through the liver and gets stored there. Um, all right, we almost have enough water. See, I just see the top of the turkey. 
And we are going to, I'm gonna move this over to a burner and we are going to start the cooking process. Again, we're boiling it, so that means we bring this to a full boil. I'm going to put the lid back on. This lid happens to be vented. Do you see the little hole? Uh, I, will, I will leave my lid slightly offset and recommend that you do the same. You don't want it to create, actually like create a vacuum and close it completely. But an offset lid looks like such. See, where it's just, it allows a little bit of steam to escape, which prevents it from boiling over. This is not fun to clean up when it boils over. I've done that. You know what? I, I would prefer to prevent you from doing that as well. All right. I got to clear some space here. We are going to be adding some pumpkin to this recipe. And because I grow pumpkins in my garden, I use fresh, or fresh pumpkin that I then roasted so you can get the meat out of it. If you don't have pumpkins, that's fine. This works. It's much more concentrated. Um, but I will be going over that in just a moment. Let me move my blender out of the way. I am going for my big burners. I'm going to actually put this toward the back so it, because it cooks for several hours. And yes, it's heavy. All right, it is on the burner. I'm going to I have my lid back to being offset. I'm gonna turn my burner on. I'm in just a few moments, as soon as I'm done talking, I'm gonna turn the fan on. If you have a gas range like I do, you do need to be running your exhaust to prevent any fumes from escaping into the house. But we are going to get this going. I have it on high. And because this is a really big pot, you are most likely gonna to need to use high heat as well, regardless of whether you have an electric range or a gas range. And we are going to bring, bring this to a full boil and you're gonna cook it until it literally looks like the turkey is falling apart in the pot. And that is usually a six to eight hour process. It is not fast. If you have a pressure cooker that changes it a bit, um, I'm using a pot and a cooktop. So, and also this is a big item. You need a, big, a really good sized pressure cooker to put a whole turkey in your pressure cooker. If you do not have a nice big pot for it, break it into pieces. Uh, that also works. Also, you can set it on its end. It does not to be, need to be setting flat like it would in a roasting pan. This big pot just happens to allow that. Now, we're just going to leave it. I can hear the gas working. The water is gonna take a few minutes to heat up because this was a refrigerator temperature turkey going into cold water. And we are going to just leave it on high heat. Just leave it there. Once it reaches a boil, you're gonna to wanna to turn the temperature down a little bit just cause you don't want, it needs to simmer, which is not a hard boil, um, but it does need to cook for a long time. And it, you'll see it when it, you're gonna be like, this, is, this was a turkey? I mean, I know it was a turkey cause I put it in the pot, but it's gonna be, the, the, the tissue just starts falling apart and that's a good thing. That's what we want for this particular project. All right, so the bulk of the calories and nutrition in this cat food is from your turkey. It's uh, a combination of light meat, definitely a lot of dark meat. You've got a little bit of organ meats. You've got the richer meat that's even along the neck. And we will also be using the bones with bone meal and the stock, which has a lot of the, the uh, minerals and vitamins and some of the amino acids that actually cook down out of the bird as it goes. Now, we're gonna be adding some things to this. We're going to be adding pumpkin, which is a nice source of fiber. So with cats, they don't tolerate tons of carbohydrates. They're carnivores, that's fairly established. But what has also been established since the 70s is that they can and do eat limited amounts of carbohydrates. The fiber can actually help move things through the system. In a straight carnivorous world, it's hairballs and what the, the prey that they ate, like what was in their digestive, like what was in the little birds or mice's digestive system, that counts as fiber in their diet. <laughs> it, yeah, uh, but it just helps move things through. Well, in this situation, we're going to use the fiber from pumpkin uh, to help with that. We're going to be using some of the fiber that is in flax. That's not the only reason we're putting flaxseed in it. Flaxseed is also a nice source of protein. 
uh, and fat. And what type of fat is it? It is omega-3 alpha lipolic acid. Now, this is not the same as what is in fish oil. If your pet has arthritis and you're, you've been instructed to treat that with omega-3 fats, you might also want to add some fish oil to this recipe. None of my cats happen to need that right now, but the alpha lipolic acid that is in the flax is actually excellent for their skin and coats in and of itself, even though it is not quite the same as what is in fish oil. Now, the important thing with this flax seed is that it has been ground down. That is an, a crucial step. Cats can do nothing with it. In fact, humans really cannot do much with it when it's in its whole seed form. It has to be ground. It will either just get passed through or it could get caught in their intestines and create a, a blockage that we don't want that period. All right, so flax. Uh, we are also going to be adding just a itty bitty bit of wheat germ which gives, it's also fabulous for their skin and coat, but it's also a nice source of iron, a little bit of an iron boost. Uh, nutritional yeast. This is different than just straight bread yeast. You don't wanna give your cats raw yeast, which is the kind that you use if you're baking bread. Um, this yeast has been uh, basically baked to kill it. It's no longer living. Uh, and then that also makes the nutrition that's in it more available. I use this in human cooking a lot, but also in small amounts, it's also good for your kitty. And it tastes like butter. Mm, yummy. All right, now the uh, final two vegetable or carbohydrate items are green beans. There's a few other vegetables you can incorporate. With this version, I'm gonna be doing green beans. I will be running these through the food processor so they don't have to deal with the big pieces. They don't have the right teeth for it. So why am I adding it? It's a great source of uh, a few of the vitamins that are, that are difficult to get straight from meat. And also that's a nice version of fiber that their systems can use and pass everything through. Now, as a filler, just to help with the texture of the food, it also provides some easy, easily digestible carbohydrates for them. I use white rice. You can use quick oats. My cats overall, across the eight of them, seem to prefer the white rice, and I have more white rice on hand, so we're going to be using that. Now, if your cat is obese, this is not gonna be a great option. However, if your cat is active and healthy, uh, they actually, their brains and their hearts and a couple of their other organ systems run on glucose where they can get that glucose by, from breaking down amino acids, but it's inefficient. So the rice and some of these other vegetables are a more readily available form of glucose. It's only a couple, it's a few less steps for their body to break it down to keep their brains and some of those other organ systems running smoothly. That is why I choose to continue to incorporate some carbohydrates in the recipe. Now, this is in general around a 56 cup uh, recipe. When we use a total of four to eight cups of this, and I'll explain the difference when we get to that step in the recipe, it is a very small part of the overall recipe calorically. Still, even with these vegetables and grains and seeds involved, it is just, it's a very, very small piece of the overall nutritional pie, so to speak, pot, I don't know, <laughs> the overall meal that they're getting. Now, I also have coconut oil here. If your cat is underweight or if their coat is not looking as glossy as you'd like it to, this is a great way to add uh, a little bit of extra fat. It's got medium chain, uh, amino acids, and my cats happen to love it. They go crazy for it. Uh, but it will help make them a little bit shinier. Again, if your cat is obese, this probably isn't what you wanna add in because it's very calorically dense. So per tablespoon, there's 130 calories and they're all fat. So you just gotta be aware what it is you're putting in. Ah, and finally, one other animal product, I'm going to add some eggs. Oh, we'll get to the supplement in a minute. So the eggs, you've got protein, you've got fat, but you've got also got a lot of vitamin E in these eggs. So it, it helps cover that particular base. Now, I have the big bad beast in the cat food world. It is taurine. This is a taurine supplement. Yes, 
In some cases, it does need to be added to a cat's diet because cats cannot, taurine is an amino acid that is found in animal products and only in animal products. Humans can synthesize taurine from two of the other essential amino acids that are found in food, that are found in plant-based proteins as well as animal proteins. Cats do not synthesize it well. They can a little bit, but not super well. So the research has shown since, really since the 70s, that it, they do need it in their diet. Whether they get it from their food or from their supplements, it does need to be there. Now, I went digging. Not all meats are created equal. What is taurine and how does it get into meats? Well, apparently it gets into meat or into animal tissue uh, based on exercise. So if you compared a plump little bunny rabbit that has lived its life in a little cage and hasn't moved around much to uh, a deer or that is hopping through the woods constantly and is constantly running for its life basically and just burns endless calories, that deer or venison has astronomically more taurine in it than um, than the plump little bunny that never left, left its cage. So not all meats are the same. Dark meat chicken has a lot more taurine in it. Like, uh, I had to pull them. They've actually studied this. I had to pull up the charts. All right, so let's, go, let's do turkey because we're making turkey. Let me get to that page. This is from a study that was published in 2003, specifically, uh, looking on at animal feed ingredients. All right, so turkey, dark meat turkey, is right around 3,000 milligrams of taurine per kilogram. Turkey light meat is only 300. And if you roast it, it's even less because it drips down in the juices. So light meat has far less taurine than dark meat. Now let me see if they actually did the heart. I don't think they did. The heart, no matter what the animal, has infinitely more uh, taurine than any other muscle because it is the most exercised muscle in any body. It has to beat constantly, which means it has to contract constantly, which means taurine is accumulating constantly over the entire course of that organism's life. So, hence, we did add the heart into this. Hence, if I'm cooking for cats and I'm using poultry, I'm going to be going for the dark meat. And if I'm using light meat as well, I'm gonna actually be looking at my, tor my overall taurine content for the recipe. This one, because dark meat turkey is so very, very high in taurine, um, and the daily recommended recommendation for a cat to maintain health, I had to look this up too, is between 38 to 56 milligrams per day. And cats are taking in, if they're around an eight pound cat, they need around 300 calories of food, which is right around one cup of wet or dry food, depending on the formulation. And with when you're purchasing it commercially, it, it will say on the bag or on the back of the can. Um, so it needs to get that 38 to 56 milligrams somewhere in that one cup serving. So we will, and again, once we've completed this recipe toward the end, I'll go through all the numbers with you and how I crunched it. But for this particular recipe, I am not going to be adding isolated taurine. If we work with different meats, there you do need to add it. Like if you're using rabbit, if your cat has a chicken or a turkey allergy, and you need to cook with pork, you need to be adding taurine to it. Um, but that is because, okay, so taurine, they need it. If they don't get it, they start going blind and their heart start, their hearts stop working properly. And, and I know I don't want that to happen to my cats. That just, and because of something I did or didn't do. So it's important to keep the taurine in the food, but this particular recipe, we're using very high taurine foods, so we don't need to add it in. Now, we've covered all of the ingredients. We've got our turkey in the pot. It's still not boiling. It's gonna take a little while and this video is gonna end before it fully comes to a boil. But just know that you need to let it reach a boil and make sure it maintains a boil until it's fully cooked. Um, take a look. 
This is pure pumpkin. Do not use pumpkin pie filling if you're looking for this. I've had people use butternut squash because you can get that and treat it similarly to this where you roast it yourself and use it and that's just fine. It's slightly different on the nutrient profile. Like there's a little bit more sugar in it and uh, but in general, the the profile of the micronutrients and macronutrients is similar enough to where you can use it interchangeably. That would also be an option. Um, special equipment, if you have it, a high powered blender or a good food processor makes this ever so much easier, especially if you're going to be incorporating the bone meal into your recipe. If you do not have something powerful enough to chop up the bones, please pick them out because they can uh, choke your cat or they can perforate in their intestines. Yes, there's nutrition in them, but it's the, the risk benefit analysis. If you cannot get it ground up into the food, for me, the risk is too great that it could hurt them by just giving them the bones. So if, if you cannot get them small enough, I, I wouldn't use them period. And you just go through the process of picking them out like I did in the chicken cat food video. But keep in mind, by doing this cooking process where you're making a stock from the whole meat, the bones and the, the meat and everything else, you're getting a lot of nutrients that cook down out of the bones into the stock and broth because we're going to be using that as the base for our cat food and we'll see that step later on. But I pulled out my food processor and my blender. The food processor will do it. It is messier than the blender. This is a very high powered blender, uh, so you'll, you may have to test it with yours and see how it goes. There is a lot of liquid in this recipe, at least before you add the rice and some of the other ingredients, so you should be able to do it uh, with pretty much any blender, because you're gonna need liquid from the stock as well as the bones, and the bones, it's not cooked enough uh, unless you can take the bones and snap them with your fingers, and that is, literally what we'll do because there's going to be some bones it's a turkey so there's bigger bones than chicken some of those bones are this long and you know you don't want to put that thing in your blender like that so yeah you break it into pieces and put it in add your liquid and then we'll grind it into a paste now here we are we've got this cooking you have kind of your shopping list your ingredient hunting list you've got your equipment list the other thing that you may want to have on hand um, bowls because you want something to put it in it's difficult to work in the pot um, and other than that I think we're gonna be set come back for part two once your turkey's cooked and that's when we take this and start adding each of these in and making it into cat food <laughs> all right again if you like this please press the like button Follow me for more, check out my other videos. We're gonna probably go even more in depth on the individual ingredients as we add them in to kind of refresh ourselves on why we're using them. What, what is the purpose of it? What is it doing to help your cat? What's it doing to help you? And again, that's it. We'll see you on the next part.